Warning. The following episode contains numerous references to acts of sexual violence. If you're at all triggered by that R word, then perhaps this isn't the episode for you. Viewer discretion is advised. So, um, let me fix this. Okay. There you go. So, guys, uh, we are gathered here today to do a special episode where, um, I guess, a while ago, someone at, came, you know confronted me. And they said, Donnie, I don't think you could do an episode where you don't drop uh, profanity. And I'm like, oh, challenge accepted. This will be the first and only profanity-less episode of Donnie Cho Says Stuff. Not profanity-less. Profanity absent. Because less is just a reduction. This is, this is ground to zero, baby. Jason, you can be really fudging annoying sometimes, I just got to say. That's why I'm real here. fudging annoying. Anyway, there will be no profanity in this episode. Right? Not a so, um, single bit. Not one dag gabbit bit. And to introduce another concept for the folks listening at home, mm -hmm. uh, a while back, Jason, you and I, we did an episode on that nameless disease that ravaged the lands a few years ago, but YouTube doesn't like when we say that word. Correct. So we figured out a cool workaround right we unicorn. we came up with a code word unicorn mm -hmm. so that every time we mention unicorn you would know that we were talking about that little surprise that came from wuhan china right yes. i like to call it the wuhan surprise but we called it the unicorn so for this uh for the uh in order to reference acts of sexual violence we cannot use that r word because the YouTube overlords aren't aren't pleased with people who use those words during their well, podcast. and all, well, and also let's let's be at least a little bit, uh, you know, this is a this is a metaphorical event mm -hmm. that we are that is being discussed is you, being used at, metaphorically. We do not want to minimize actual harm done by actual victims, right? So that's why we're going to use a code word, unicorn. But that's going to be our standard word for those such despicable acts. And there's a reason why we need to bring this up today, because they have unicorned our heroes, Jason McLean. They have. And you and I are both unhappy with it. Now, yes. I, I got to keep it a little bit real for the folks listening at home. You know, you and I, Jason, we've done numerous shows together. And on these shows, we've had to act all nice and proper mm -hmm. and sincere and, you know, not, can't say anything too crazy, right? Right. But backstage, you and I have been harboring feelings of rage and anger. Yes. Both of us. And we would both vent with each other on the phone mm -hmm. during our off hours because we just are just two angry men. Very very angry men. Although I have to say, I, it's really hard to be angry because I have this new pen. Um, it, my wife brought it back from uh, one of her trips uh, at one of these conferences. Because, you know, I usually have something to play with with my hands because I'm very hand driven. Yes. So it's usually a pen or pencil. This one, it's not just a pen. It has a little thing for like, you know, you can write on like digital things. It has a level. Let me see. I don't know if you can see that. It has like a little level right there. And yeah. a ruler, so oh yeah, multifaceted pen here. I'm really enjoying it. So it's hard. It's hard when I have a pen this cool to be mad. But oh. but the topic today is so fudging in infuriating. The unicorning of our heroes by individuals who have no who are just vandals that's all they are they have no actual soul right they are they are simply dripping with the bodily fluids of vitriol and anger and these particular anal cavities have just gone out of their way to be fissures 
of seething call of seething destruction upon Western civilization. Therefore, it is not hard to to even with a pen such as this to have righteous indignation and anger. At the, do you want to behavior? Do you want to share with the folks at home the straw that broke the camel's back? Uh -huh. This camel's back has been broken for a very, very long time. But for this particular episode, it is what they did to the Arkham Knight series Batman mm -hmm. with the newest uh, video game, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Right. For those who, who are unaware, in this video game, you have Harlequin, Captain Boomerang, who has the Speed Force powers, mm -hmm. Deadshot, and King Shark. And, of course, Task Force S X, meaning Suicide Squad. They have been unleashed to go into Metropolis because Brainiac is attacking the Earth. And what we find out is, they, is that Brainiac has subdued the Justice League and brainwashed them and, and now fully controls them into being his puppets. And you as... And I'm I, the fact that you have to say this sentence is is is, is insane. Harley Quinn, <laughs> Captain Boomerang, Deadshot, and King Shark killed the you literally killed the Justice League to defeat and then defeat Brainiac. There's a right. few caveats for how they take out Superman, things like that. But the main, but the the thing that really just caused everyone to blow up is. Batman, because this is not just a random Batman. This they they confirm in the video game that this is the Batman from the Arkham Knight series of games, which is beloved. I love those games. I every... love those games. Yeah, yeah. This these people absolutely love these games, and they're saying it's the same universe, same people. They, in fact, one of the big complaints about the gameplay itself is half of it is exposition on how. They retcon half the half the freaking video game. Like, why is Deadshot black instead of white? Obviously, we all know why. It was so they would match up with the movie. But in the in the original Arkham City or uh, Arkham series, he was it was the original white version from the comics. You have to explain why Harlequin is is uh, you know actually usable or or viable. Why Batman? Because in the series, it, the series ends with him faking his death as Bruce Wayne, because now everyone yeah. knows Bruce Wayne is Batman, and then he becomes this sort of nightmare creature. You have to explain how he leaves Gotham and is now working with the Justice League in Metropolis. Half this, half the story is exposition. Right. As to try and rectify all of this. So the game, and a lot of people are complaining because it's a looter shooter, which is not what Batman was. The Arkham Knight right. games, they were not looter shooters. So every, And to top all of this off, originally it was believed that this was um uh oh i just forgot his name uh the voice actor for batman kevin conroy kevin conroy thank you this was kevin conroy's last outing as batman before he passed away sadly due to cancer right. last year and, and it turns out that he has recorded some other things for some other projects as you know that so it's not the last time we will hear him it may be the last time we hear him as batman though but we're not. We're, although some people have said that, that he has recorded a few lines for one of the upcoming Elseworlds movie, uh, yeah. uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths movies that's coming out. Long story short, that at least kind of was like everyone came and said, "No, no, this is not his last outing as Batman." So we're good with that. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot here where a lot of people said this is insane. Not right. only are not only are these heroes taken out by these characters, there's a there's a lot of there is clear disrespect given by the by the characters you're playing as you kill these care as you kill these heroes they, they every one of them before you actually kill the heroes there is a moment where they're doing or saying something to rub in the fact that they're the ones killing batman flash green lantern Su uh superman all of it right because that's the whole woke movement isn't it they have yeah. to tear down our heroes Mm -hmm. They have to, they have to fudge them right in the rectal cavity. They in do in front of all of us. 
Well, it's it, and here's the thing, right? Something that's going to that really needs to be said. I think this is one of those problems that we have on. It's interesting. The right is no longer because we're like, oh, right, left, and I'm just in the middle. No, no, no. We have gotten to the point where the right is literally everything that was a Democrat 10 years ago or really 20 years ago. Anything right of that is now considered conservative. That's how insane these people are. And here's the reason for it. Um, is that this is, and this is something I was actually talking to my son about earlier today. We have not done a good job of explaining what the actual conflict that's happening in our society is, right? Mm -hmm. Because the problem with when people try to explain what wokeness is, they go, they try and pinpoint what it does. Because that's how we identify dogs and every other thing, right? It's like, okay, conservatism or traditional liberalism or socialism, you can sort of define them, right? By And, and you can look at their actions and say, this is what they believe. Here's why they believe it. Here's what they're doing. The problem is a lot of people within the woke movement, they have really radically uh, fun, you know, differing ideas. And really, a lot of these ideas are fundamentally contradictory. Right. Um, again, not to get not to get lost on on it in this episode, but it's like ho homosexuality and transgender should have should want nothing to do with each other because they are they are actually contradictory concepts. Right. Right. There's a lot of these things where it's like, what? Why do people keep trying to like when it's, it's LGBT? It's two SL LGBTQAI plus up down left right. It's like, well, it also means black people, and it also means it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What? What do any of these things have to do with one another? Right. And the reason they have these radically contradictory ideas is because fundamentally, wokeness is not actually it. The what it does is the fig leaf for what they really want which is the destruction of western society they and, and so anything that actually contradicts or destroys the things that they target because this is just neo-marxism that's all it is the woke you want to find the woke movement it's a neo-marxist ideology period end of story everything that they do is nothing has serves one purpose and that is to destroy those things that they believe are enemies of that I of neo-Marxist ideology. That's it. That's why it's in That's why they're they that's why none of their none of these ideas that they that they spout tend to actually make sense on any level because they're just designed to create conflict and chaos. Mm -hmm. It's it's just neo-Marxist agitprop is all it is. And they make it obvious too, you yeah. know. You know, uh, a little background to this uh, whole Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. It is being uh, universally reviled and panned mm -hmm. by the video game media world and players are all united because everyone fudging mm -hmm. hates this piece of excrement. Not because yeah. they've unicorned Batman repeatedly and they unicorned the Flash. You heard about what they did with the Flash, right? Yes. But tell our, but please tell our, tell, once you tell so our. So after, after you eliminate the Flash, one of the characters, Captain Boomerang, takes out his male member and proceeds yes. to urinate on the body of the Flash. Yes. And rather than remarking about how fudged up the whole situation is, mm -hmm. the other characters, they look at Captain Boomerang's male member and they all congratulate him on its size. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of fudging bull excrement is this? I just discovered that this also has a screwdriver. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Flathead and Phillips head. Now, back to why. The, so here's the thing. To understand why. Because my son and I, my eldest son, who is actually a gamer of some repute. We were talking about this. He hasn't played the game, but he's aware of the game. And he and he was we were talking about it. And he even mentioned like with the whole fact that it's a looter shooter makes no sense. And the thing is, there's an easy fix to this game. Really easy. You it's so called kill the Justice League because that's their orders. Mm -hmm. But they realize, hey, you know what we can't do? Kill the Justice League. Because if we could do that, we would have done it by now, but we can't. So what do they do? They 
cure the Justice League, and they use each of the Justice League members to help cure each one, and then they take out uh, Brainiac, and of course they have some mission to do while they're taking out Brainiac, but all the long, all along the way, they find a way to, they're stealing things, you know, you give it a reason to be a looter shooter in the first place, mm -hmm. you don't have this conflict, and you have the heroes essentially say, hey, uh, or they're like, hey, you know what? We'd like to help you with Brainiac because since he can, since he got y'all brainwashed the first time, if y'all can take, if y'all can deactivate the bombs in our heads or take the brain or take the bombs out, we can help you take out Brainiac. So by the end of the game, you've you've had a reason for it to be a looter shooter. You haven't actually killed the Justice League, right? And then you have your characters escape as 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 a joke, right? right. So you get everything that you want. Everyone's happy. It's an easy, it's an easy fix. Instead, they made the choice to actually kill the Justice League. Because here's the thing: in neo-Marxist ideology, the Justice League are the bad guys because they represent order. What do they do? They save the world. For them, the world is this patriarchal hegemony. Mm -hmm. That's how they describe it. So anyone who actually, and again, there's the reason why why uh harlequin is the is the leader of this group it's like yeah she it's like yes you can have males but the, you know they have to be subservient the males who are the heroes nope they're the bad guys they have to be the bad guys and right. in her in her diatribe as to why before she kills batman she's talking about how bad batman is because you know he's flying around causing brain damage because there was a joke about the injuries batman causes in the games to these to these thugs would in reality leave them ma pretty horribly mangled. So much he hits damage. people in the head really hard all the time. Yeah, it, because yeah. It's, it's a video game. But the yeah. thing is, it's as if she's coming from a place of moral superiority. That's literally the way they say it. it's like. Well, no, she's a she's coming. They are literally saying that she has moral superiority to Batman. It's like this is this woman is a murderer. She did. And particularly in the games, she's done terrible things. Mm -hmm. And that's lit. But that's the whole point. It doesn't matter that she's a terrible person because she doesn't represent the patriarchy. It's all neo-Marxism. That's all this is. Yeah. And and but it's not just the Justice League game or the, the Suicide Squad game. It's what Kathleen Kennedy did when she took when she took all of the original characters from the from the original Star Wars series, bent them over the table and unicorned them with a with a with a splintery wooden broom handle like it was a like it was a New York City prison. Yeah. Over and over again, right in that rectal cavity. She just unicorned Luke Skywalker. She unicorned Han Solo. She unicorned Princess Leia. Chewy repeatedly, yeah. Well, I mean, Leia was less unicorned, but she was unicorned, yeah, only less so. But but, the, but here's the thing where she was unicorning Luke and Han, and to a point, Chewy, which is really racist when you think about it, with they how she treated Chewy. Um, what she her unicorning of Leia was to try and shoehorn her into an idea. That she already upheld. Right. Like Princess Leia was all that was the whole point. She was a prince. She she had political power. She was already a political ruler, a, uh, you know, ruler of that uni in in that universe. She had that. And she was already a leader of the of the faction. She had she was already what she needed, but they're like, no, we have to take her political power out and make her a revolutionary. She became General Leia. Right. It's a princess. She was the general because in their minds, and this is important. This is important. There is no such thing as truth in Marxism, neo or otherwise. There is no truth. There is only power. They, they believe a neo-Marxist sees that there always has to be a revolution, which is why they like to dress up with this neo-military, um, you know, personas. They like the idea of the military persona. So they needed her to be a general. She couldn't be a princess because princesses are evil because princesses are part of the patriarchy. 
so they had to kill they had to kill han they had and and give him and, and by the way take everything away from him before they killed him right and it's much as I actually do like the 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 solo movie. I think it's pretty good. It's not great. I think I think it was pretty good. They did have to nerf him. They said he's not really the pilot you think he is. Yeah, right. They had to nerf him, and then you get Luke, who fight fine. I don't know if a contract expired or what. Mark Hamill's finally able to start talking you know, talking the trash he he had he should have. He literally said he says. I'm dead because I got tired. That's what happens. He uses the force so much he gets tired and dies. Right. Which is preposterous because the entire idea is, and by the way, look at what she does. She's been trained for like a week and now she's a Jedi master. Right. That's the entire point is to say, Look at how bad the patriarchy is. Look at how much of a loser the patriarchal heroes are. We're going to give you a new hero. And we do that by showing how bad the old heroes really are. That they yeah. need this new hero. Right? People have argued the, the phrase, you know, the Mary Sue is, is, is sexist because it's undermining female characters. No. There are plenty of characters who female characters who are not Mary Sue's. Literally, Leia is one of them. But particularly in science fiction, there's a ton of characters of female characters who are not Mary Sue's, have never been considered Mary Sue's, and are beloved. Right. And have been for a decades. Lot. A lot. And yet they those characters are enough. We have to have the Mary Sue. Now, a lot of people are saying, okay, well, what makes a Mary Sue a Mary Sue? For those who don't know, there was a a very shortly lived um, attempt at a Star Trek uh, revival television show. Mm -hmm. One of the characters was named Mary Sue. Literally, that's the name of the, of the that was the name of this. Is that where character. the word comes from? Yeah. And and the thing is, the one of the reasons the the, the show was was killed was uh, before it actually went to air was because. They everyone hated this character that they were that was being worked on because she had she literally knew everything and they made the old characters completely dependent on her, right? Mm. Whereas, like, look at uh, let's use Star Trek, right? The next generation is a great one, plenty of female characters, and, and just in that entire universe, highly competent characters, right? And yet, they're never in conflict with the male characters because the male characters are equally competent there was never a we need to make this character incompetent to showcase how competent this character is they could stand on their own and they right. weren't overly dependent on the other one that's what that's what made the mary sue the mary sue is it, essentially it's a female character who is elevated above all the other characters particularly pre-established characters for zero reason right and these characters yeah. have no flaws they have no foibles there's nothing to overcome um a lot of people have argued well luke skywalker would be a mary sue except as everyone kind of points out no no he's not in fact at no point could you argue he was a mary sue because you're explained why he's a good pilot right he is utterly dependent on obi-wan at the beginning mm -hmm. of the film. In fact, he's going to join the Empire. That's one of the things they said, look, I can, in another season, we'll have the droids. I'll go join the Empire and become a pilot. He, he's very much a, a person who's taken out by these characters and put into a situation where he's like, oh, okay, I got to do something. And Nobody believes in the kid. In fact, when he's talking, uh, he's like, ah, I, can, I can hit that. You know, it's no bigger than a womp rat. Like I used to bullseye womp, rat, womp rats, you know, when they're going to go destroy the Death Star. Everyone looks at him like he's a nut. Hmm. No one's like, oh, no, we need him. He's the chosen one. He's this hero. None of that is there for him. And also, he's not overly impressive to anybody until after everything's done. Until he's actually proven himself. And in fact... He has to prove himself. Whereas, look at Captain Marvel, right? The only thing she overcomes is her lack of belief in herself, right? 
Right. Great example. Everyone's utterly, de- and again, the one of the big oh. things about Mary Sue is pre-existing characters are overly. I've got, I've them. got the best example of this. Mm-hmm. The way they, the way they unicorned Indiana Jones. Oh, I haven't even bothered Waller Bridge. Mm-hmm. I haven't Phoebe even bothered. Waller Bridge. She's like this feminine feminist yeah. icon comes along, an Indiana Jones own fudging movie, and she basically is better mm-hmm. than him in every way. Yeah. For no reason at all. Mm-hmm. Better than him gosh, everything. In his own gosh darn film. Mm-hmm. And it but that and that's the whole point. It's yeah. we have to take these patriot again. That's the what's going on in their heads. These are vandals. They want to take the they want to they need to destroy the patriarchy by unicorning these icons and saying, see, look at how much better we are. Right. Because they, because here's the here's the dark secret. It's not just that they don't like or understand these characters, the people who are writing and producing and directing these films and video games and comics. It's not that they just don't understand these characters at all. They actively hate the characters because in their minds of what they represent. Because they're utopians. They think that they can create this fudging utopian world where, every, where everything is wonderful and nice and beautiful if only these intellectuals who are simply eating their own philosophical excrement were put in charge because look at what the white again because again they've defined the they've defined the modern hegemony as white male christians and Mm -hmm. so anything that they believe holds up this hegemony must be destroyed batman superman han solo luke skywalker any any of it, right? It has to be destroyed. It, Captain Kirk. That's he has to be taken down a peg. They only kind of, sort of have they they realize they really couldn't destroy uh, Captain Pike. He they really haven't done anything with Kirk. They just said we're going to forget him and move him out of the way. But we'll have Pike in there. But Pike is like, yeah, he's 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 allowed to be the hero, but they very they go out of their way to put him in a situation where he needs females of, of minority status. That is what they've done. Now, here's the thing. Guess what? 20 years ago, we had characters who would go and enlist the aid of minority characters. That was never it's never been a problem in Star Trek at all in fact oftentimes they were you know what we would call minorities like they were captains and they were heroes they didn't feel the need to try and to degrade the other heroes because in a way what you're saying is it's not it's not sufficient for for these characters for the minority characters that you're trying to represent to be the characters and to be good, they have to, or even be acknowledged as good, they have to be superior. They have to be superior characters because this is not actually about representation or what they claim. It's not about that. It is about humiliation and degrading of these characters. And in order to attack the patriarchy, that's all this is. It's neo Marxist agitprop. They they are vandals who actively hate these characters. Yeah. So they it, it is this is the sacking of Constantinople by the by uh by the Muslims. And the and all these characters that are beloved are being drug out and unicorned in public as a way of showing that they have superiority. And, and and that's the other thing. That's why they have to. That's why they kill the characters and then replace them with a with minority character as a way of saying, "We've unicorned." It's humiliation. We've unicorned your character. We've killed your character. Now we've replaced your your character with a new one that suits our needs. Right. Because it is agitprop. That's what this is. They like Harley Quinn. They hate Batman. Why? Because really think about it, there's nothing redeeming, redeemable about Harley Quinn. People say, oh, well, because of this and this. It's like, no, 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 stop. Look at who this character is. Look at 
uh, Poison Ivy. They make Poison Ivy a hero in this. Although, and even that, the way she appears in this character is, or in this uh, iteration makes it way creepier, right? Because she's a child now. Yeah. Uh, again, don't know too much about how they pull, how they claim that, but well, I mean, I've played all the games. I could tell you, um, I could tell you some extra information about the yeah. Arkham series, and uh, because they were all made made by Rocksteady, right? Right. Yeah. So the, actually, the guy who wrote the Arkham games was the original yeah. writer for the Batman animated series. Yeah, he was one of the yeah he was yeah. one of the original writers, but yeah. he wound up leaving Rocksteady because of all the bull excrement that was going mm -hmm. on because i won at a certain point now this is a trend that's been going on with uh, AAA gaming these oh, past yeah. few years where they hook up with these companies like with rocksteady they hooked up with this company called sweet baby inc yeah sweet baby inc's whole purpose is to make sure that these video games uh measure up to the uh dei mm -hmm. the esg standards so what they'll do is they'll go into scripts and they'll make sure to include some woke garbage, right? Mm -hmm. Because it has to have some woke stuff in there, right? Yep. So they actually replaced the dude who wrote the Arkham games, who wrote the original Batman animated. They replaced that dude with a bunch of fudging, like these, these ladies who have no fudging clue about the lore about the games they're not even video game fans or comic book fans no they're not they just have like these freaking middle-aged soccer moms essentially take over the writing room <laughs> if they were soccer is... moms it wouldn't have been this bad that's the problem they're not they're vandals they're they're people who they're, they're people who are ideologues who, yeah. who hate these characters it's the it's the poly, they are literally the politburo for those of right. you who remember uh, the USSR, right? The Politburo, the again, this is people forget the term politically correct where it came from. It was Russia, it was Russian communism, where you right. have somebody from the Politburo everywhere to say this is politically correct. It was so messed up, man. It's like watching is watching, it's like watching these woke vandals essentially squat over the head of your favorite childhood heroes spread their manually spread their derrieres and defecate all over their faces mm -hmm. and this fudging nonsense needs to stop because now it has extended over to the x-men what did yeah. they just do with the x-men right disney plus they just recently released a trailer where they're essentially Re, you know, re revising the '90s X Men cartoon that you and I, Jason McLean, both grew up on. Mm -hmm. We both love the original '90s X Men cartoon. They're bringing it back, the original animation style. They even brought back the original voices when they could. And guess yeah. what they did? And what did they do to our beloved X Men franchise from the night? What did they do? They wokeified it. They wokeified it they morph again what i find interesting is morph is a character who was created and if anyone argues with me you're wrong morph was created for the con for the cartoon that's it he was created mm -hmm. to be killed you can argue he was based on changeling from the 60s that's an argument that you can say well he's influenced by that's fine i agree he was but it's not changeling it is morph was in was a wholly new character they have now made him, uh, and again, he was he was killed off in the first episode. They brought him back later, and that was a big plot point was his return and how he came back with Mister Sinister, bringing him back, screwing up his mind. This series is not just a re envisioning of that original series. It literally take it picks up right after the original series ends with Professor Xavier's death, right? And Morph had come back and sort of become a part of the team. They're reintroducing him as non-binary. Right. That's that's the main thing here is they've they've introduced this character and said, okay, we're going to read and they've redesigned him also to be far more to be to so he's no longer a white male. They've made him this sort of he looks what he reminds me of is actually the uh, chameleon from Spider-Man. That's what he reminds me of. Right. Because um, we have to, I guess we we apparently have too many white males in the X Men, yep. right? 
Wolverine and and Cyclops. That's unacceptable. That's too. Oh no, we gotta we gotta jam those minorities in there. Mm-hmm. Round out that DEI. Yep. We, that's it's like Morph yeah. was originally a white male. Oh, we'll we'll make him literally the color white, but we'll get rid of any descript features. So now he's no longer recognizable necessarily as being right. what they would say white coated. It's like they want. It's like you want to bring Bishop on the team. Great. Bishop was was always great on the team. Everyone loved Bishop. We need so you want to add Bishop to the team, that's fine. No complaints there. They added a few other characters, but the thing is, they morph was the most obvious example of we're gonna DEI this character, right? And throw it in your face and say, Here's this character, here is his it's now a their status. Because they want to push this ideology again, not because they actually give a damn about people who may uh, who may affect it. This is not. Please understand, they do not care about these characters, right? It, but more all. importantly, they don't care about the the actual real people. They don't care about them at all. They don't. They couldn't give two fudges about these about the actual people. When they talk mm-hmm. about transgender people, please, they are th- those. They don't care about them. They are tools for the destruction of the hegemony. Because one, once their revolution is over, all those people are going to go away. Every communist revolution, every Marxist revolution, everyone who helps you win the revolution is eliminated very quickly because they don't want you around to rebel against them. This is, it's agiprop, and they don't care that they're actually going to be hurting kids who could see this. Everyone, at play, when you see these, when you see these non-binary characters pop up in cart, and again, cartoons meant for kids, you can say, "Well, it's not really meant for kids. It's aimed at the older generation." That le-. no, it is still the cartoon made for. And I hate that. I hate that argument because they use it on a has been a hotel. It's like, well, it's not a, it's adult animation. It's not for kids. Great. Is there a code that you have to pop in as an adult to prove you're an adult to watch has been a hotel? No. Great. So it's accessible to kids. Right. Then it's a cartoon with characters that even if it's like clearly not necessary design for kids, it still is going to appeal to kids with the designs. And we have law on this. You remember Joe Camel? I remember Joe Camel. Joe Camel became illegal in the United States because the argument was he is a cartoon character that is that is whose features are designed to appeal to children therefore they are marketing to children when they say oh no it's adult animation it's not meant for kids that's irrelevant if the character is designed to be pleasing to children it is aimed and targeted at children period end of end of conversation these dei vandals are targeting children with these cartoons very specifically they know that they're doing it and that's their intended audience Regardless of what they're telling you, that is the intended audience. They want to destroy children. That's what this is, because they have to destroy them. They need chaos. Destruction is all they know. They're vandals. They don't believe anything they're saying. They're just doing what they what the right. high priests of the woke have told them to do, and that is to sacrifice children so they can get their revolution. That's all they want. They want the revolution. They want the chaos. And they're going to unicorn all of these things, all of these characters. These beloved the icons, right? Because in our, in our childhoods, yeah. Exactly. Because they are seeing they're seen as supporting pillars. Um the guy who co-created Spider-Man. A lot of people say he's the creator of Spider-Man, but that's a little oversimplified. Uh Steve Ditko. Stanley thought up Spider-Man and Really, Steve Ditko did the rest, but he gave like a 10 minute speech in the 90s. And it was again, and it's really one of those things everyone should listen to. Um, because in fact, see if you can put a link to it in the description for the show. It's something everyone needs to listen to because it's essentially it's on the it, it, he is responding to the 90s, uh drive for these you know vigilante characters right the mm-hmm. 
and he, he talks about the importance of art. This is why I care a lot about art. Um, because people say, oh, it's just a cartoon. It's just, a... no, it's not just a this. Art is important. Art is the, there are, it's, you could argue four things that may, that define human civilization from the earliest point in history. When you can say, look, humans were here. And really one of them, you could argue, isn't necessarily for it to be human. It, uh, art, I would argue, predates that. But like farming right? For a civilization mm -hmm. to exist, you find farming, you have doctors of some kind, you have teachers, and then you have art. Those are the four pillars of society. I mean, you could argue religion ties into these things as well as an over, but I mean, on a base level, right? Before, no, there are hunter-gatherer societies, which means that's farming's gone. But you will find someone who's a teacher, right? Someone who's a doctor, and someone who's creating art. Art is always there. Even if it's just making your tools a slightly different way, it's a mm -hmm. form of art. We decorate things. We make things pretty. It is a defining feature of humanity. Art matters. And you can tell when a society destroys itself by the art it creates. Art is a, I mentioned the, uh, the, the point that uh, Steve Ditko was making. He says, art is supposed to be aspirational. It is supposed to point you and say, this is what man can be. This is, there's no point in showing you what you can, what you have done or what you are. You're supposed to, sh art is supposed to show you what you can be. That's why superheroes are important to children and to teenagers. It is the call to greatness. It is the call to do good and great deeds. It is the right. call to sacrifice. Right. That is why these characters are, are chosen to be destroyed because they don't want, they, this revolution cannot have people doing great things because greatness is against their religion. Marxism is a religion. It is an ideology. That's what it is. That's why this is, that's why everyone who uses these ideologies, their societies always collapse and fail and requires the, the mass murder of millions of people to even be viable for 80 years. Right. Because they, you can't, you can't call people to greatness. Great societies had people who would go and do great things because there's a call to greatness to make human for humans to pro to progress this neo marxist ideology like all marxist ideology cannot have great people you can only have bitter people destroying things because marxism is not about building it's ultimately only about creating so that you can turn everyone into one thing a brick in the wall that's it look at look at how it worked out for china yeah right I mean, you, yeah. that's the no, tyranny please. of it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you if you speak out against any of this woke stuff, what do people immediately accuse you of? Being either a misogynist or being mm -hmm. a homophobe, right? Or a racist. Which is a form, or a yeah, which is like just a form of tyranny, right? It's just a way of just tearing yeah. someone down, someone who resists your ideas. You could just throw that around. Oh, Donnie doesn't like all this woke garbage in his movies and, t and video games? Ah, oh, he, he must be a homophobe, right? Yep. Meanwhile, there you can have great gay characters in stories, right? Just yeah. because someone's gay in a story doesn't make it woke. It's just, and the whole gay agenda or the feminist agenda, those are just skins, right? Those yeah. are just surface level. I mean, you can have, yeah, you can have great gay characters, right? Mm -hmm. You can have great female characters. You can have female heroines. We've always had them. Yeah always and that's but that's what they hate they really actually really hate particularly feminists they hate these the female heroines because they are feminine feminists hate women more than anyone else that's why they that's why they go out of their way to butch up these characters to make right. them not beautiful to make them look You're less right. feminine and more masculine they oh for fundamentally the people hate women for the people listening at home who are non-gamers so there's been there's been trend that's been going mm -hmm. on these past few years in gaming where 
prior prior to a few years ago the uh, female uh characters were all like sexy and they had large mammary glands and mm-hmm. very pronounced derrieres oh, and yeah mm-hmm. and then you know the dei agenda the companies like sweet baby Inc. get into these gaming companies and these developers and they make all the uh female characters look so i don't know they just look like they look masculine it's not they look plain well so here's the thing it's not just well, so here's the thing i actually have no problem with putting clothes on these characters right like yeah yeah the original designs for a lot of these characters i would argue is not really helpful now i will say this no one's got a problem with he-man and it you right know, the thing about these characters is they are exaggerated stereotypes that's literally but that's how humans think about things right, right. it is to say like oh no they're setting a standard it's not really setting a standard it is however defining a a it's a hyper visualized way of saying this is a female this is a male right and they 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 exaggerate the proportions the and the aspects that are that make up those things that make up that make up sex the way it is right and it's not to say this is what everyone should be it is just a way of saying this is what the character is it's supposed to be exaggeration it's art it isn't real now as we've gotten to a point where we, we can have very realistic characters all right that's fine. You want to put more clothes on them? I'm okay with that. I do think there's a point where it's like, okay, Wonder Woman's costume's a little too skimpy, right? You've gotten a little too skimpy with some of these things. I'm okay with making with covering them up. The problem is, it's not just that they're doing that. They are going out of their way to make them masculine. They yeah. are changing the proportions of these characters to a point where it's not just, well, okay, so like, okay, Laura Croft, right? For a truly athletic female form the the mammary glands because there's going to be less fat will be much greatly will be much great much more greatly reduced right Mm -hmm. no problem there however what they're doing is they'll widen the waist so that's almost a male proportion and they'll put their shoulders where it's further out which is a masculine proportion in heroic art a uh, an average human being will be the shoulder length will be will be one head length from the neck, right? That's how you draw it. A superhero yeah. proportion is you put the inner part of the shoulder where the head is. That's how you tell who the heroes mm. are, right? It's like if the shoulder is within is within the head length, it's a normal man. If it's further out, that's the hero. That's a heroic proportion. The and hmm. the and the male form is a box or it's a rectangle, right? The hips and the waist of an of a masculine character should be in direct proportion to the inner part of the of the shoulder blades, like where your shoulder where your chest stops and your shoulders begin. That's where the waist is supposed to be. Yeah, now that I think about it, I have noticed like all the NPCs, like mm-hmm. the NPC characters, they'll have like more narrow shoulders. Then you have someone who like Thor comes in and he's got shoulders for days. Yeah. And that's, that's by design, right? You're telling yeah. people what's what that's the masculine proportion with a female though. Her hips should be where the edge of the shoulders are like when the shoulders stop. That's where the female, that's how you're, you're like, you're, you're saying here's where everything is. They, ma- they are, they, they're narrowing the hips and extending the waist to make it look more masculine. Um, nebula in guardians of the galaxy they always gave her a much more pronounced uh bust size because karen gillian is a very thin woman she really is she's a very she's a very uh gracile female very lean so they get and in but in the new movie the third one they reduced her bust size and gave her character more masculine features in the shoulders to make her look more masculine but it's not mm. just the proportions in these video games that donnie's pointing out because they're so realistic now they are making the female faces they're making the male faces more ugly and they're making the female faces more masculine right and you can compare to to video games that were made just 10 years ago and it's very clear that they were far more feminine and the new ones are not just uglier, objectively, they are more masculine. These right. are people, again, the broader point here is these 
the the modern feminist i would argue actually all feminists have always had this they've actually secretly hated females and it's not, but they the modern ones are the worst they hate femininity that's why they're doing this they hate femininity it is and they are they are here to destroy it. it because think about it when if you really genuinely loved women if you wanted the best for them wouldn't you want to to showcase them for the things that they do that men cannot do it says like no we're going to show you how cool women are by showing you by showing them doing things that men can do and we're going to butch them up and make them ugly to showcase it so they look like men doing it and we're going to make all the men look incompetent in order to showcase this because yeah. again let's go back to the characters like i said we we said this entire time there've always been hyper competent hero heroines particularly in sci-fi and video games right mm -hmm. here's the thing though they were always allowed to be females first and foremost right meaning those there those things that make women unique and very different from men were allowed to be showcased oh case in point i just here's here's my favorite example ready Mm -hmm. Boom, Chun Li. Yes, this is the one. This is one of the few video game characters that has not befall that has not been befallen to the greatest female video game character of all time, in my opinion. Right, icon. Right, everyone yeah. loves Chun Li, but they don't. They don't butcher her up. Mm -mm. Right? No, they don't, because no. it would be stupid to do that. Yeah, you don't do that to Chun Li. That's she's too iconic. Well, I mean, they did unicorn Batman, and yeah, now they're unicorning the X Men, and they unicorn Star Wars, and they unicorn Indiana Jones, and mm -hmm. you know. And again, just because we resist these ideas does not mean that we are anti, you know, women or gay. I mean, I I grew up on enjoying gay characters like Shipwreck from GI Joe and he Prince like, Adam from He Man. They were not gay. They were gay. Look, Prince just Adam because was Shipwreck was in the Navy doesn't make him gay. Shipwreck was totally gay. I mean, probably he was, he was a thousand percent gay. I mean, come you, on. You think he was hitting on Scarlet as a way of covering for his for his closet? Oh, yeah, he was overcompensating. He was overcompensating. He was overcompensating. Yeah, I think that's probably. You know, what? you may be fair. And and Adam did wear pink shirts. Yeah, you may be onto something. So yeah, we we don't have any problems with gay characters. You know. Yeah, it's just that. Again, it's when the when the woke agenda they make it too obvious and tearing down the people that we've all grew up with and love, like the mm -hmm. X Men and Batman, and then they have to just do all this nonsense, right? I mean, well, it's it's not just that they're here's the thing: it's I don't think they actually care about these people. I don't. No, they're not fans. See, you're in 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 Dog Cho agrees. That's why she, that's yeah, why he's he here to show. Attention. Yeah, he he's attention. here to show to show. Uh, solidarity with with his father but that's the whole point right is that i don't think these people actually care at all no about about the real people they're like oh no we need representation we want to represent them no you don't you don't want to represent them at all in fact uh i've made this argument disney particularly disney it's not just it's everyone but it's like why you know it's one thing to hire an actor who is not necessarily the same race as a character no one's actually cared about that what disney does is they say look isn't it cool that we've race swapped this character isn't it good and important that we've race and gender swapped and we've made them gay or whatever the problem is they want attention for it because they want credit for doing something they're not actually doing which is representation the, in fact what they're saying is you're not worth creating a new character or using a pre-existing character who's already of this race right that already exists right. we're just going to use a and to, to since we're talking about video games i'll use the video game language we're going to reskin this character because we don't want to put in the effort like we're okay warner brothers you want to tell me about how woke you are where's my where's my static movie where's my icon and rocket movie where's my hardware movie Hey, where's that Blade movie that we were promised, huh? Yeah, the Blade movie you were making didn't even f star Blade. It was about how Blade was going to get nerfed to three different chicks. And they were supposed to be the heroes of the film. Did you hear about what they did to the newest Wolfenstein game? Wolfenstein, no. of all the things. It's called Wolfenstein Youngblood. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the whole premise of Wolfenstein, you grew up on Wolfenstein. I yeah, grew yeah. up on Wolfenstein, right? Old school Wolfenstein, you're just going around killing yeah, German soldiers, right? Yeah. First person, sh- it's a first person shooter. It was just do look up, look up the latest Wolfenstein. It's called Wolfenstein Youngblood, where it's all plot driven. And it takes, and uh, the main character of Wolfenstein, BJ something, mm-hmm. he is kidnapped. And the main protagonists are his two teenage daughters. Yeah, his two teenage daughters are the main protagonists of Wolfenstein. Yeah. Yeah. The audacity of these people sometimes. Well, again, because they're they're vandals. This is it used to be that the vandals would come in. They would destroy your town. You know, they would burn villages. They'd unicorn people in front of you to show Mm -hmm. that they that they had beaten you these people don't even have the ability to do that so they're right they're doing it It, this is all this is all fifth generational warfare this is the thing that no one really understands we're in a fifth generational war with with this neo with this neo-communist globalist group this is psychological warfare it's one thing if they were if they were to pick up weapons and and try overthrowing us militarily they know they can't do that that's why this has been going on for 60 years this mm-hmm. is just the, this is just the plan that the ussr had put into plan into place 60 years ago um this is just it finally coming to fruition it outlasted the ussr but it has finally come full, come to that point where we're get they're getting the revolution that they wanted they're getting yeah. the marxist revolution but it's a fifth generational warfare uh, revolution it isn't the old school warfare where they actually had to burn things down they're they are burning things down metaphorically they are create they are unicorning people metaphorically because here's the thing the deep dark secret of humanity if you see it it's real to your brain yeah them killing batman in a video game is just as real to your brain as if watching as if you were watching someone be killed in the real world it is literally the same thing to your brain that's why fifth generation warfare works that's why psychological operations work your brain doesn't know the difference between real and imagined particularly remember remember when they made superman gay oh yeah man and it's like, come on, DC. Robin's right there. Oh, they did that too. Robin is right there, guys. Come on. If there was anyone to make gay, come on. He's right there. Oh, they already did it. I don't no, know they've already done that. Like they, yeah. yeah that, it's it had to be all of them. That's the point. It has to be all of them. If you if you came from a planet, and you watch television for thir- for a day you would assume half the population of the united states was homosexual of some was a homosexual right. uh and a minority it's like well how is it a minority if there if if it's half the population like that's that's the point this really isn't about what they claim it's about it's not about unity it's a this is yeah. a psycholo- psychological warfare created in order to destroy what they see as or what they call the patriarchy that's not what's happening they want to destroy western culture in order to an individualist free culture to replace it with their neo-marxist ideo- ideological culture that's what they want and these characters that that would drive that promoted the idea that you, that you should be a hero that you should sacrifice that you should do things to help other people that were calls to greatness they have to be destroyed so that you can't be great Mm. that's what this is about it is it is destroying the call to greatness because greatness is not tolerated in a marxist society it's not allowed right just like in china yeah well again china is a marxist society i mean it's which so yeah there were a couple times where they gay swapped a character. I'm not gonna lie, that I was mm-hmm. kind of on board with. Like when they gay swapped uh, Colossus, they made Colossus gay. I was like, I, I kind of like this. I, I, I'm kind of on board with this actually. In the Ultimate I, Universe, I pers- yeah, yeah. When because you know it's Colossus, right? First of all, as a character, he's a little bit dry. 
He's overly yeah. sensitive. He does art. He's like an artist in his free yeah. time. I'm like, you know what? If you're going to gay swap one of the X-Men, I feel like Colossus is a good choice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and they, they had to make morph trans. I mean, you could have gay swapped Nightcrawler. He's right there, guys. Nightcrawler's don't, right don't there. Don't go after Nightcrawler. They've already done enough to Nightcrawler. He's right there. Nightcrawler, no, no. He the man's a hero. Don't don't do that. I think they made uh I think they made Jubilee into a lesbian, which actually I'm kind of on I'm you know what I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of on, on board with that actually. I'm kind of my pro my problem is uh, you have these teenage heroes. So here's my you know they always say why do you care about the yeah. about the sexuality of these characters? Why do you care about them? Hmm. Particularly when these when some of these characters are supposed to be 13 years old. Right. Like that's the thing. Like some of the, like some of these younger characters, there, <clears throat> there's a reason why Robin is supposed to be 13 years old, right? It's not he's not supposed to be a character that has a sexual identity per se. That's kind of the point. Is that it's a neutral character. He shouldn't. He, he's 13. He shouldn't really be in any escapades. Same thing with Jubilee, right? There shouldn't. There should never be these things. But that's why they make him a little bit older. And they're like, okay, yeah. let's have them do something. And it's like, okay, guys, that's still creepy as all get out. Which uh, which character would you not mind if they gay swapped? Well, so here's the problem. At this point, it would be, I don't think there's any characters that they haven't. I wouldn't, you know what, you know what I, uh, which character? I would like to character? see, I'd like to see them straight swap some of these characters at this point. There is one character that I wish I wish they would gay swap, but they've never done. But I kind of wish they would. Luigi. There's no Luigi. need for that, though. They're not. They're uh, again, they're, they're not. They're fundamentally. Do you realize? Hold on. In canon, to the video games, Mario and Peach are not a thing. Right. Right. Like they're that's oh, not what? a thing. There, he saves her. Yes, but they're not an item. No, no, they're not. So I'm so all I'm saying is there's a lot more fun, but again, yeah, Luigi he goes back though. to why do you need to have it's they're like, well, why do you care? Why do you care? Why do you feel the need to to gay swap every character in the in, in the comic book world? Why do you need to do this? Because fundamentally they are vandals. That's they don't care right. about gay people at all, they don't care about these things. They are just trying to destroy so that they can replace it with their neo Marxist ideology. And here's the problem. And here's the real kicker, guys. If you think, oh, you're just no, if they get to, if they can put their neo Marxist ideas in place, you're not going to have the freedom to do what you want to do. Because you know what neo Marxist ideologies need? They need people to do things. That means they have to have kids. So, yeah, there. That's why they neo Marxist or Marxist ideologies have always put homosexuals up against a wall. They don't tolerate any being anything other than a brick in the wall. You think you're so you're going to sit there and do lesbian slam poetry? They're going to put you in the field mm -hmm. because they need food, they need tanks, they need airplanes. They don't need slam poetry. And they need kids because they need soldiers. Now, you could argue that that they're going to that's what the whole robot thing is going to be, right? They're just they're just going to get rid of the yeah. humans and replace it with robots. But we're not there yet. That's the problem. If you're causing problems for to create their revolution, they're going to take care of you. They're going to take you out next because they don't want you causing problems for their revolution with your next revolution. These people don't care. They're destroying the characters because this is fifth generational warfare. They don't want people to do great things because people who do great things will destroy their, their revolution. And the people that you think, oh, they're here to help us. They agree with us. No, they don't. They're the, you're being used. You're a useful idiot. That is what they call you. And once this happens, you're the first people they're going to get rid of because you are, because they don't want you 
jeopardizing their revolution. It's not Before, just video uh, games and cartoons. It's Western society that they're after. And our culture and our mm -hmm. kids and yep. the way we're educated. Uh, oh, real quick, before I let you go, can I share with you uh, my favorite homosexual character in a video game ever? Sure. Bill Williamson. <laughs> Are you familiar with who he is? Not entirely, but I'm, I'm aware of the game, yes. Yes. So he's actually one of the main antagonists in Red Dead Redemption 1. But in Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a prequel, he's a member of the gang, right? The thing mm -hmm. is, I didn't figure out he was gay until my sixth playthrough when I started piecing everything together. And you're like, oh, he's gay. Like, there's hints, very subtle. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. Like, there's this one instance in the game where he's talking about, yeah, you know, one day when I get married. And then you see a couple of the other gang members are, like, laughing in the corner. And you kind of ignore it first, yeah. you know, when you first see it. But then you start realizing, oh, he's a he's closet. He's in the closet. And that's why he turns out the way he is. Like, that's why he has to act all macho and mm -hmm. aggressive all the time. Because he's overcompensating for the fact that he's still in the closet. Even though everyone in his in his gang knows he's in the closet, but nobody outright says so I was anything. like, what a, what a clever way. See, that is a well-written, mm -hmm. well-developed gay character. Just because a character is gay in your story doesn't make the story bad or woke. Yeah. Again right and to be mm -hmm. accused of homophobia just because you choose to speak out against woke culture is a form of tyranny yeah well because again wokeness yeah. is not it isn't what it claims to be it is simply neo-marxist ideology and it is simply the tool that is being used to perpetuate their ideology because again once they have the revolution all everyone that they claim to stand for and fight for y'all are the first ones up against the wall right and then they're going to fudge you up in the rectal colony. Colony? Cavity. Yeah, let's go with it. Now I'm going to go yeah. with it. Those, those, those mother fudgers, man. Yep. Those lousy mother fudgers. So before we uh, take it home, Jason, do you have any final words or thoughts you'd like to share before I hit the uh, end button tonight? Art matters. Art is supposed to give you something to strive for, to be better, to do great things. A culture that does not create great art is a culture that is dead and dying. Yeah. And um, chew on that, folks. Chew on, chew on that fudging wisdom right there. We're going to leave it here. Peace out.